सिंगल कंप्लीट डेंचर why it is important because single complete denture also faces a typical problem and that's why we need to address this that problem now suppose patient comes to you like this you can see the lower arch full set of teeth are present except one right and they are into the fair condition they are not poor they are periodontally also not poor do not have of course they have got a lot of wear but they do not have the caries at all so it is not a good idea to remove this and give the upper lower complete denture right so in such cases you will have to give patient a good option of single complete denture so what is single complete denture it is a complete denture which occludes against some or all natural teeth a fixed processes or previously constructed rpd or cd right it cannot be it's not always necessary that it's all natural teeth also sometimes you have a good rpd you can have you can construct a single complete denture against good rpd cd also and sometimes fpd also so why we are doing this again d1 the god prosto god he says that you need to preserve what is there right you don't have to remove the teeth and give the complete denture so preservation is what is important for us right so what are the indications for single complete denture so natural teeth that are sufficient in number in one arch which you do not want to extract right a partially dentulous arch in which the missing teeth have been or will be replaced by a fixed rpd or denture means whenever one arch is having the teeth and they uh, missing teeth but they can be replaced with the rpd or fpd that should be kept there the existing satisfactory complete denture in one arch there also you can give a single denture in the opposite but as i say that it has got some specific problems that's why we are taking some single complete denture as a special denture so what are those problems so it has got a problem of occlusal forces occlusal form of the natural teeth support of the denture base and intermaxillary relation and what are the consequences of all this problem is three there are basically three consequences of the single complete denture one is fracture of your denture frequent fracture of your denture combination syndrome and the tooth wear so let's see one by one so what is the occlusal force is usually with the single molar is 198 lbs and with that with the complete denture is only 26 lbs so you can imagine that maxillary complete denture and mandibular all teeth present how much force this mandibular teeth will give on to the maxillary denture so lot of occlusal forces are though there on the uh, edentulous arch which arch you are going to give the single complete second is the occlusal form of remaining natural teeth now see this case you have tilted molars you have inclined the occlusal plane inclined this all give the lot of problem to the single complete denture so that all has to be addressed denture base should have maximum extension within the functional anatomical limit right and that's why usually it is to avoid the fracture and all it should be reinforced with a metal or some kind of uh, reinforced reinforcing material and one more uh, factor is the intermaxillary relation usually you can see this case how difficult it is to arrange the teeth here the maxillary teeth are in different occlusal plane there are some some of the teeth are supra erupted some of the teeth are uh, tilted with that you have to Uh, see to it that you uh, measure the exact vertical dimension you see to it that occlusal problems will not lead to the fracture of the tension right so all these factors you will have to consider when you decide the single complete denture so what are the requirements when you decide to do give the a single complete denture few there are few requirements you will have to see before you decide so first is you should have the in acceptable interocclusal distance again if the interocclusal distance is very less your denture will keep on fracturing and you will not be able to manage it so if you want to reinforce it again the bulk will be there you need some amount of good interocclusal distance to do that you need a stable jaw relation with bilateral tooth contact and centric relation position stable tooth quadrant relationship also with the axially directed forces means you should have it it shouldn't be directly you have uh, teeth present only in one arch and only in one portal then again there will be difficulties right 
and you should have the possibility of balancing at least some kind of freedom of tooth contact within the 2 mm range of mandibular movement so unfavorable force distribution will have this sequelae that is extensive morphological changes of the dentition base as i said that too much of force is given by the opposite teeth there will be more morphological changes of the denture foundation that means your teeth your denture uh, your ridge will become flabby or something like that right extreme jaw relation sometimes and excessively displaceable displaceable denture bearing tissue so this happens when you have uh, unfavorable force distribution now there are different combinations of single complete denture so this is first is single complete denture opposing natural teeth so natural teeth it can be maxillary and it can be mandibular so you can here see you can see the mandibular teeth and the uh, mandibular complete denture and maxillary teeth are present right so this can be any of this combination then the single complete denture opposing the arch with the fixed processes here because here the chances of uh, recontouring will be very less because this will be all metal or ceramic or something like you will have to first see whether the fix which is already there is acceptable or not the occlusal plane is acceptable or not right and the occlusal concept what you are going to give will be possible or not so this is all you have to consider when you are giving it opposing the fix processes when you are giving opposing the removable processes you will have to consider this factors that is the occlusal plane the tooth by arrangement according to the occlusion of uh, teeth position of the opposing arch aesthetics and material composition material uh, selection of the teeth right and it should be decided according to your plan and single complete denture opposite also opposing the existing complete, complete denture so what will you see in the existing complete denture sorry that is what is the condition of the existing denture what is the duration of time patient is wearing that complete denture whether this denture was immediately inserted like immediate denture so if it was a immediate denture anyways you will be requiring the relining rebasing or a new denture after certain time so in all those factors you will have to consider when you decide the single complete denture opposing an existing existing complete denture so what are the usual common occlusal disharmony is in the single complete denture you can see this picture how this canines have supra erupted because there is no opposing teeth this lower entrius will supra erupt the anterior plane is different posterior plane is in a different position so you will have to do some kind of selective grinding to bring them into one plane right second is tilted molars you can see here in this diagram also how this this is going to affect your maxillary denture this will keep on Uh, uh moving the denture into this forward position so you need to change this inclination by giving some kind of like fpd is like this you can correct this angulation by giving a telescopic crown or a simple fpd or an rpd and change the uh, inclination of your opposing arch right and then decide your uh, or you can do the orthodontic correction of course and if it is too much tilted severely tilted and if you cannot do all this treatment like fpd rpd or even orthodontic treatment then you need to decide on the extraction of that tooth right so usually what we do is we do so much of modification of the one arch of uh, teeth and then only we fabricate the uh, single complete denture so there are lot of modifications required for the opposing arch teeth so those are different techniques given by this the different worker to do the modifications of the opposing teeth so first let's see what is function as say so what he says is mount the maxillary and mandibular cast at an acceptable vertical dimension set keep relation then arrange the teeth mark the modification on your cast right with the red pencil or something then utilize this cast to do the intraoral selective grinding right and then make the reimpression then again mount it then again arrange the teeth and then again selective grinding till you achieve the acceptable occlusion so the biggest disadvantage of swenson's technique is it is very time consuming many a times you will be doing this correction just after seeing on the cast how much is reduced then you doing in the patient's mouth again making the impression again doing the same thing right till the time you achieve the acceptable occlusion 
So instead of this, the second technique is she says that you use some kind of occlusal plane template, which will help you in reducing the stain. And with this template, you reduce it. Mark your reduction on the cast, and again follow the same procedure as Swenson's, right? Reimpression, mounting, rearrangement. So what Bruce has given technique as you do the occlusal correction modifications on the cast, and then a make make a acrylic clear template on that cast, and utilize this clear template intraorally. Remove all the inter interferences till this acrylic clear template sits properly in the patient's mouth. So once it fits, you know that you have removed all the interferences. You have done the, all the modifications what you did on the cast, right? And then you use this as a reference. So what is the advantage of those techniques? It gives better accurate results. Then Boucher also has done almost similar technique. Only, but he has done on the uh, programmed articulator, on the adjustable articular articulator, and done all the balancing and everything. Right. So that was about the methods to modify the teeth. Right. Now we are looking at the methods used to achieve the harmonious balance of patient. So basically, they have categorized it into two: the articulator equilibrium technique and the functional chewing technique. So let's see what is functional chewing technique. So functional chewing technique is something where you have the maxillary arch teeth present and mandibular nail. This compound ring, you can see this is the compound ring. This is the wax over the compound. So this compound ring ring, uh, ring is touching to the maxillary teeth, and then the wax is uh, placed over here, and then it is placed in patient's mouth, and patient is allowed to give all functional movement. So so that you have the exact vertical dimension with whatever functional. Uh, movement patient needs, right? And then it is mounted, it is indexed, and teeth are arranged according to that index. So that is what functional chewing technique, which also has given, and Sherian also, Rod also has given some technique, which has only made the changes that instead of compound rim, he has made an acrylic template where the acrylic pin will be given, and then the wax will be adapted over here, and that will be allowed with the uh, functional movement. Of course, the articulator equilibration technique, uh, technique is similar to what a laboratory TV mount technique. Please go through it once from this thing because of the time uh, constraint. I couldn't go into the detail of re laboratory remount. Right? What are the type of the teeth used, non-anatomic or anatomic? Now, this depends on the how your opposite arch is having. If your opposite arch teeth are having a good occlusal, uh, good uh, uh, cuspal inclines and all, you can give anatomic teeth. And if they are flat, they are worn off, you can use non-anatomic teeth. What is required is you see to it that you des uh, design your teeth in such a way that you have more of the vertical force and less of the horizontal force. These are the different types of materials used, but nowadays I think mostly what I use are acrylic teeth. Right, so I'm not going into this detail also. Okay, now let's come to the combination setup. So usually, what is the most important consequences of single complete denture is Kelly's combination setup. Right. So what Kelly says is the series of destructive changes occurring in the jaws of a patient wearing a complete maxillary denture opposed by a mandibular distal extension artery. So try to understand that patient is having distal extension mandibular RPD. That means patient's mandibular anterior teeth are present and maxillary completely edentulous, right? So what are the sequelae? What happens? What are the uh, symptoms of this syndrome is patient will have loss of bone and flavorages in the maxillary anterior, uh, anterior maxilla. There will be palatal papillary hyperplasia. I'll show you that in the diagram also you will understand. Enlargement and downgrowth of the maxillary tuberosity because maxillary anterior teeth will give force on the anterior maxilla, and because mandibular ridge also is resolved, the uh, the enlargement of the maxillary tuberosity will be there. Like see here in this picture, you can see this: the bone loss is there in the maxillary anterior region, so this becomes flabby ridge here. The maxillary tuberosity. Grows down because of the mandibular deepening of the ridges here, resorption of the mandible, right, and the extrusion of the mandibular lower anterior teeth. So this is a typical case of combination syndrome. 
So what is the basic objectives for the combination syndrome is that you have to give the uh, positive occlusion stop for the mandibular RPD so that it does not still resolve the ridges, right? It should have the rigid and stable design. Use of entry at teeth for the support, right? Use the lower entry for the support so that it does not give a lot of load on the ridge and it distribute the load equally amongst the ridge and the teeth, right? And see the status of the posture in the denture at first. So how can we avoid this combination syndrome? So there are three factors which we have to consider is try to retain the weak mandibular, weak mandibular postures and weak and maxillary anterior teeth also. As I already mentioned that retain few maxillary anterior teeth. That is very important that you either uh, maintain the mandibular posture or maxillary anterior teeth to avoid combination syndrome. And usually you instead of having the removable partial denture, you give the over denture. So utilize the principle of good retention and stability, right? Design your RPD very well so that you have the uh, maximum extension, good support, and so it will not have a problem. Have a good occlusion scheme, right? Whatever, like you select for your uh, uh, single complete denture, have a good occlusion scheme so that your denture will be stable, right? And that will dictate your chewing 